also have an interview that Zola did with Ibrahim, and he is another Palestinian terrorist, came to know the Lord, loves the Lord. I think you'll like this. So, 1989, Zola decided to be a better Muslim. I wanted to follow my faith. Mm -hmm. And I wanted, I knew my faith. I followed it. I loved uh, Allah. I loved the Quran. I loved my culture. I loved my people. But I wanted to follow it seriously. I wanted to take it seriously. I wanted to apply it to my life. So I decided to read. And I decided to study. I had some time on my hands. And so I opened up a Quran and a Hadith. You see, to be a true Muslim, Zola, you must accept both the Quran and the respect of Hadith that are accepted by, for instance, Al Azhar University. The, the, the hadith is the sayings of traditions, Muhammad. yes, sayings yeah. of Muhammad, traditions of Islam, uh -huh. of course. Yeah. And uh, so I started to study, and I ran into some inconsistencies that I had questions about, of course. So that led me to look into it further. So I spent the next eight to twelve months studying other religions, and basically ruled, in my mind, theologically speaking, that they were incorrect. Mm -hmm. In my mind, because there was evidence that I could show that they were not correct, but it came down to the Bible and the Quran. Oh, dangerous. <laughs> yeah, so the three monotheistic religions. You Judaism. were playing with a sword and a sure. touch. Yeah. right. <laughs> Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. Well, Jews I already hated. Christians I was taught and born and bred to believe that they were deceived and basic puppets of the Jews, yeah. and Muslims were my people. So, but two books. So I decided to collect all the information I could around the world from Muslim scholars, Muslim teachers, educators, allies at university, information on the internet from the top people in the world so that I could get to the truth. As I was studying it, I was getting more and more discouraged because I was running into problems. For instance, I was being told, uh, according to Islamic thought, Islamic teaching, that the Bible came after the Quran, meaning Islam was the first religion. Abraham, Jesus, Moses, everyone was a Muslim, yes. which means submission, submission yes. to Allah. Yes. But I was taught that, I always thought that the Bible was first, but I was taught that it was the reverse. Hmm. So it opened up a whole slew of questions, but not just that, many other inconsistencies. So I started to look into it further, piqued my interest, and I was not going to stop until I found the truth. Well, the Bible with its histories of the Romans, the Greeks, and so on, it's obviously much earlier than the Koran. Sure, but the educators and the teachers of Islamic law do not teach people that. Of course, they uh -huh. teach that Islam was the original religion. Uh -huh. I hope well, that. They're wrong by 2,600 years yeah. from Abraham to Mohammed is, is, is longer than for us back to ancient Rome. Well, it's interesting you said, going back to Abraham, one of the things that I was studying that really jumped out of the pages for me was as I was reading the Quran, it said that Abraham, his son, the promised son, and the, the one that Abraham was going to sacrifice was Ishmael. Uh -huh. But I knew as I was starting to study the Bible and look at it both, the Bible said that it was not Ishmael, it said it was Isaac. Uh -huh. So as I studied, I saw the parallels. Now I have a problem. I could see a clear contradiction between the two. So I thought to myself, they both cannot be right. Mm -hmm. One must be right, one must be wrong, or they're both wrong. Yeah. So I decided to look into that further, and that opened up many other doors, of course. Well, for the next three years, that's what I did. Morning to night, I investigated, I got to the root of it. And I came to the conclusion, theologically speaking, especially concerning the corruption of the Bible, there wasn't a single shred of evidence from any scholar, not just Muslim, or anyone else in yeah. the world that could prove that the Bible was corrupted in any which way, historically, yeah. theologically, archaeologically, in any which way. Yes. Not a shred of evidence anywhere. Yeah. And I was stunned to find that because that's one of the main doctrines that are being taught, that Muslims are being taught, that the Bible is a corrupt book. Yeah. There is no evidence for that. Yeah. But in your case, that's a costly thing to find out. The Bible itself says, count the cost. Yes. Because so, you were faced with a terrible decision. I was stunned. I, uh, not only that, I, I had to also study the reverse. I had to study the Quran. Yes. And I was running into problems, running oh, into yeah. holes. Oh. One day, uh, after about three years, um, after I knew theologically it was true, I got on my knees and I said, God, I know the God of this Bible is real. I know you're real. I'm asking you now to reveal. And I prayed that prayer every day for months after that. Um, even though I knew theologically, I had another problem, Zola, the biggest problem of all. What do I do with my hard heart? 99% of that hard heart was directed towards my hated enemy, the Jew. Yeah. Because 
what I was reading in the Bible is that all of us are the same. In other words, the Jew is not less than me. And I'm all my indoctrination that they are my enemy and I hate them for many reasons. I had to let go. I knew I had to. The Bible is telling me we're all the same in God's eyes. No respect to our persons. How am I going to let this go? In other words, I wanted to believe the Bible, but I wanted to keep my hatred. Oh, yeah. No, that won't work. <laughs> Did it? Yeah. So for months it went on. Yeah. Finally, God purged me of it. That is Abraham, a believer, a former Palestinian terrorist in jail in Israel, came to know the Lord. That is our hope. That is the hope for every mankind, Jeff, that they come to know the Lord. That's right. Jesus, Yeshua, went on record saying, you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. 